And this is what we do in this financial is we give people choices. Um, and one of the one of one of the, the, the goals is to secure funding. And we talk about the various choices of the way you can fund a project with fixed price being the absolute worst possible choice you've got. And then there's like seven or eight better choices, actually in a higher so it's more of a maturity in that case it's more of a maturity model. There's significantly better options available to you, and you can start working your way up the list and find you know whatever is appropriate for that relationship. Um, so does that make sense? Is there anything? Yeah. So I appreciate it. You know, having said all this, it is hard to push back. It is risky because you might lose that bid. But you know what? Maybe it's a good thing to lose that um, because the customers, you know, thrashing that badly, chances are it's going to be a bad project. So sign me up. I would rather have my competitors get bad projects yeah. if it was me. So. Which one is the best, best one? A time and material is good actually. Pardon? Time and material contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Time and material is my better option. Um, I'll probably get the order wrong. So at the bottom is fixed price, stage gate, which is like, you know, big chunks of time material. Time and material cost plus, which is time and material but with a low time and material rate with uh, performance bonuses. And then paying by feature um, is the best. Now, paying by feature um, is phenomenally difficult to pull off. Um, it is possible some organizations do it, but you know, so it's you, very advanced. Might be the way so do you agree with the story point based contract? Like, you know, you deliver find a story point. Um, you choose what no, you I, I, it's sort of meaningless, right? It's like saying we're going to deliver 500 gummy bear points for the stuff, right? What the hell is that? Yeah, but um, yeah, are moving towards that. Now I'm seeing that companies are moving to, to deliver it. We'll deliver five or three points for you. Yeah, that's totally meaning. If I was a business person, I wouldn't sign up for that. That sounds like mumbo jumbo to me. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that's questionable. Is it Very like questionable. Capacity, I, I, capacity or something? Oh. Yeah, I, I think the, pr the problem there is reasonably unsophisticated IT people that don't know, you know, all they've ever had is scrum training or something, and you know, now that's, you know, yeah. They're so blind to reality that, um, but yeah, try it. Yeah, you know, we have to try it. But um, if it was, if somebody came to me with that, or if a customer said, yeah, some Indian provider was, you know, coming with this story point stuff, I would say, stay away from that. Um, but what is a story point? Like fundamentally, what is a story point? Um, it's nothing. Some wacky measure. That's, I would think one would be the customer satisfaction. Based upon the index, like yeah, yeah. Angels, so that they will be able to uh, funding. The second one will be about the number of defects. If a high depends upon the customer production defects will be there. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of defect tracking stuff like that and defect trends uh, metrics. Um, the problem is you can fake those metrics. So um, I'd be by if once again a customer came to me with that idea, I would advise against it because I would walk them through. Here's how I would fake it if I was the provide service provider, and uh, here's how I'd screw you over in that plan. Um, so yeah, you, you could that would fall apart very quickly because you can fake the numbers. Any metric you can fake, uh, not so not such a big fan of it. Um, and story points are one that you can very easily fake, yeah, yeah. which is the biggest yeah, problem. Yeah. Which is one that. of many problems. Exactly. With story points. Yeah. I've actually seen some really good uh, delivery and working together, which have been on gummy bear points because the business comes and says I paid it. Yeah. But procurement has a rule that there has to be something they can count, otherwise they won't pass it. So they yeah. So they put something so in. So count function points now. Not I'm a big fan of function points, uh, but at least you can automate that. So if you're using a modern language, you can get automated function point counting tools that will do that. Um, the real problem is procurement, though. I would solve. Uh, so when I work with organizations, I try to get to the root cause problem, and it's uh, questionable procurement practices. So let's fix that problem uh, because you know, yes, we could put band aids like story points or. You know, counting something or you know whatever. That, those are all band aids on the real problem. Let's solve the problem, and that's procuring prop. That's and the real problem is procuring people that don't know how to procure, you know, that don't know how to procure IT. That's the real problem. I would rather solve that um, because you know, if every single project this customer has all these band aids around it, that's a lot of cost on the customer end, and not really doing much for it. So let's solve the real problem.